Should you try out the low FODMAP diet? Watch this video to find out. Hey friends, it's Amanda. Welcome back to Let's Talk Health. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you about the low FODMAP diet. We're gonna talk about what the low FODMAP diet is, how you do the low FODMAP diet, and then what are some food swaps that you can use when you're on the low FODMAP diet. First, let's talk about what is the low FODMAP diet. So the low FODMAP diet is a type of an elimination diet that's used to help manage IBS and other digestive concerns. So FODMAP stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. So you may be wondering, what do those words mean? So they are types of carbohydrates that are poorly absorbed in the body, and then they can lead to symptoms of bloating, gas, and other IBS-related symptoms. So a low FODMAP diet has been studied in people with IBS, and it has shown to reduce symptoms by about 70% in people with IBS. So that sounds really great, however, this diet can be very restrictive. You are reducing a lot of foods that you probably would normally eat in your diet. So this is not a long-term diet. The low FODMAP diet, as I mentioned, can be quite restrictive and you are reducing a lot of fiber on this diet. So by eliminating these foods, you provide some short-term relief but then you are altering your good gut microbiome. The main goal of the low FODMAP diet is to give your body a break, give your digestive system a chance to calm down from these fermentable carbohydrates, and then later on add them back in. So what you can do is give it a try, do the elimination for about eight weeks, then slowly add things back in and see how your body tolerates. So before starting the low FODMAP diet, you should ask yourself, one, do you have IBS or SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? Two would be, are your gut symptoms related to food? So this would be like having bloating after eating, having gas, diarrhea, or constipation that's related to the types of foods that you eat. So if you answered yes to those two questions, then the low FODMAP diet may be helpful for you. Okay, so let's talk about what are the type of foods that you would avoid on a low FODMAP diet. So some of the foods that you'll have to eliminate on low FODMAP diet include dairy-based foods like milk, yogurt, and cream, wheat-based products, including things like bread, crackers, some vegetables, including garlic and onion, and then also some fruit. So there are quite a few foods that are considered high FODMAP. I'm not gonna read out all of them to you. I'm actually gonna leave you a link to Monash University. They are the ones that do studies with low FODMAP diet and IBS. They'll have a list of all the foods that you would need to avoid and which ones are safe. So you can check this out to have a full extensive list. But what I'm going to do is help you figure out what types of swaps you can have because I find that is the most challenging thing when you're trying to follow a low FODMAP diet. So let's start with garlic. So garlic is in a lot of foods. If you eat out at a restaurant, most likely they cook with garlic and this can be either garlic powder or the whole garlic. So it can be challenging when you're eating out at a restaurant, you'll have to ask for no garlic in your food. But when you're cooking at home, something that you can use as a swap is garlic infused olive oil. So this is olive oil that's infused with the flavor of garlic and it will help flavor your food to make it still taste like garlic, but you won't actually be consuming the whole garlic, which can cause some IBS symptoms and gut symptoms. So the next food are onions. So instead of having onions, what you can do is have the green part of a green onion, so the green tops that you can add in a salad, you can add it in dishes, that is considered low FODMAP, whereas onions, like whole onions, red onions, white, yellow, even the white part of the green onion, those are considered high FODMAPs. So in order to get the flavor of onions, you can use the green part of the green onions. Okay, so the next one is dairy. So you don't actually completely have to give up everything that has dairy in it. You could do lactose free. So lactose is one of those carbohydrates that can be difficult to digest. So if you have lactose free options, those are considered a low FODMAP, or you can also do a dairy free based option, something like an almond milk or a coconut yogurt. Okay, so next let's talk about grains. So this one can be very challenging because you cannot have wheat, which would be things like pasta and bread and crackers. So you can choose some gluten-free grains. This would be things like quinoa, rice, millet. There are so many gluten-free breads out there. And then instead of pasta, you could do a rice-based pasta. 
So apples are considered high FODMAP. So instead of apples, you could choose orange. These are low FODMAP. And again, just remember that this is something that's temporary. I found that it was pretty crazy that I had to avoid apples because they are considered healthy. You know that saying, an apple day keeps the doctor away. So just keep in mind that this will be a temporary thing to eliminate. Okay, so just a tip is that you'll want to read labels of anything that you buy that's packaged to make sure that it doesn't have any of the ingredients in it. Most likely would be things like garlic and onion. You're gonna be okay with all the other spices. There are some companies that cater towards low FODMAP. So there is a brand called Body Foods and they create low FODMAP products like salsa, sauces, and other packaged things that you could have that are low FODMAP. So I hope that video was helpful. So just a recap is the low FODMAP diet is designed to help reduce IBS and gut related symptoms like bloating, constipation, diarrhea, and gas. It's meant for people with IBS or SIBO and those that have gut symptoms related to food. It is meant to be a short-term diet. You don't want to do this long-term. You want to give your body a chance to readjust, but then remember it is important to still include these foods because fiber is great for your microbiome. So if you want to learn more about how to improve your gut health, make sure to subscribe and join our gut health community. I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.